Ever wonder how soundproofing really works? In this lesson, I am going to teach you the fundamentals of how soundproofing works so that you know how to design a soundproof system, a soundproof wall, door, window, ceiling, floor, you name it. I'll teach you how it works. And then I'm also going to have this added benefit of teaching you how to avoid things that are kind of like snake oil. There are people on the internet that want to sell you products that are supposed to soundproof or sound isolate, but really at the end of the day, they end up making a lot of money off you and you get mediocre results from it. So stick around. This lesson for you is if you're on that soundproofing journey. My name is Wilson Harwood and I am a professional studio designer, soundproofing expert, and acoustician based out of Nashville, Tennessee. If you're on this journey, I have something that I will share with you that will help you immensely. This is my free soundproofing workshop. It is 45 minutes of in-depth teaching going over exactly how to build a soundproof room. So definitely check that out. If you haven't already, just go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. All right, let's jump in to this lesson on the science behind soundproofing. So let's start off with what I call the three pillars of sound isolation. The first pillar is going to be mass. Single-handedly, I always say mass is the largest lever we can pull to increase the isolation of our soundproofing systems. Now, mass really just means heavy things that we can put on our walls, doors, windows, ceilings, and floors. And one of the best ways to describe how mass works from a scientific perspective is to recognize something called mass law, which states that each doubling of mass, we get a six decibel decrease in transmission loss. Now to put that in perspective, you might be wondering, okay, well, what does 6dB sound like? Well, 10 decibels of transmission loss equals a halving of sound perception to the human ear. So when we have 10 decibels, if you turn down a speaker and it's producing 10 decibels less, that will come across as a halving of volume. So a doubling of mass is not quite, but close to a halving of volume. And that's how we can use that as a way to understand the mass in the mass's impact on our soundproofing assemblies. The second pillar of sound isolation is creating airtight systems or assemblies. I'm going to use the word assembly a lot, and it's a simple way for me to describe walls, ceilings, doors, windows, floors, you know, anything that we're trying to sound isolate. So for your assemblies to be soundproof, they need to be airtight. And this is done by usually just using acoustic sealant or acoustic caulking around the perimeters of all of our assemblies and doors. It's used by adding, you know, special uh, seals around our doors to make sure they're air airtight and then making sure our windows are airtight with acoustic sealant around them as well. So if you are designing a soundproof room, it must be airtight for it to work. The third pillar of sound isolation is going to be decoupling. And when I say decoupling, what I mean is that typical room within a room approach that we talk about. If our soundproofing assemblies are touching the exterior structure, then we are going to have trans sound transmission vibrations translate from the exterior structure to the inside of our soundproof room. And we don't want that. So at all points in our soundproofing, we need to make sure that we decouple either using air just simply not letting our systems touch each other or using specialty acoustic clips that will decrease vibration noise energy from transferring into our walls. Now that we have covered the three pillars of sound isolation, I want to talk about another crucial concept that will help you with every aspect of designing your soundproof room, and that is the mass spring mass approach. Now, the mass spring mass approach basically stands for what you probably think it is, which is we have mass on one wall, for example, if we're talking about walls, then we have a spring, and then we have mass on the other side of that wall. Now, you might be wondering, well, what is the spring? The most common spring we use is air. In fact, when we have a typical double wall system, you have mass being 5 8 inch drywall on one side. Then you have the air gap, which is actually from the inside of the drywall of one wall to the inside of the drywall of the other, which is actually eight inches. And that big mass spring right there actually helps reduce the sound transmission a lot and is super important. 
Just a side note, you have to put some form of fluffy insulation in the spring for it to work properly so you avoid resonances within the chamber between the two walls. The spring can also be other things though. It could be something like foam. I've used reconstituted polyurethane foam as a spring before. I've also used insulation like rock wool insulation as a spring underneath a floating floor. So we can use different materials to create the same effect of having mass spring mass, but the fundamental principle logic remains the same of wanting a mass spring mass sandwich. Now, to describe this more in depth, let's look at two different examples of a possible wall system. I'm going to start with a very extreme soundproof wall assembly that I've actually never designed, but this gives you the idea of how this could be applied. So let's say we have an exterior wall that is CMU or concrete masonry unit block wall filled with sand. And that's our exterior wall. It's going to be really, really freaking heavy, super heavy wall. Then we're going to create our spring, which I'm going to make it one foot. So a really big spring and I'm going to fill that one foot gap with a bunch of fluffy pink R13 insulation. Then I'm going to build a secondary wall, the same thing, eight inch wide CMU masonry block units filled with sand. That's going to be my second mass. I have a perfect mass spring mass sandwich in this case, and that wall will block a ton of noise, especially low frequency noise, because we have so much mass in such a big spring. Now, many of you are probably thinking that's going to be very expensive and it's a massive waste of space and you are correct. That's why a better system is this second example, which is a tried and true method that's been used many, many times. And this is our STC 63 rated wall, which you can see right here, which is the typical two by four stud wall with five eighths inch drywall on one side a one inch air gap between the two stud walls, and then another stud wall with five eighths inch drywall, two layers of five eighths inch drywall on the other side. There is pink fluffy R13 insulation in both walls. It's good to stagger your studs and voila, that is a perfect mass spring mass system. Again, the mass is the five eighths inch drywall. The air gap, not actually the one inch air gap, but the full eight inch air gap between the two layers of drywall is our spring. And then we have the other mass on the other side with the two layers of five eighths inch drywall. So I hope that hammers home the point that we want to also have a mass spring mass system at all times on our roof, on our walls, on our ceilings. The only time I don't really do these rules in my designs is on the floors where I really, really, really like to use a concrete slab as my floor and I bolt my walls right to the floor. And you might say that's breaking all the rules, but because our mass, our concrete slab is so strong uh, and so heavy and it's surrounded by dirt, I usually don't worry about sound transferring through it easily because it just can't. Now, there are exceptions to that rule, which is if you have a ton of vibrational noise transfer going through your slab, say from dropping weights on a floor nearby on the same concrete slab, or like heavy machinery being used nearby, then we might have to float the floor above the concrete slab. But that's just a side tangent to help you understand that these concepts can be bent, maneuvered a little bit, but overall, you need to use them to design a soundproof studio correctly. Lastly, I want to finish with this idea of keeping it simple. So when we design studios, there are plenty of materials on the internet and things that people want to sell you. And you're going to go down rabbit hole after rabbit hole after rabbit hole of, well, maybe I should do this. Maybe I should do that. I have built my business off of keeping this design simple so I can replicate it over and over and over again, like a template for people. Now, that doesn't mean I don't do custom situations, but my mind is always going to the simplest possible design I can get away with so that I save you money and I save you time in both labor and material costs, which is extremely important when we get back to reality from the basic physics to the actual fundamental reality of how we're going to build this thing. So. The key things I ask myself whenever I come across a design decision in a build that is not super rudimentary or fundamental, I ask myself these questions to make sure it'll still be soundproof. Number one, is there enough mass on both sides of my assembly? Number two, is there a sufficient spring in the mass spring mass system? Is my spring large enough? Is my assembly completely airtight? And lastly, have I decoupled my assembly from the exterior structure so that I don't get flanking noise coming through from the outside structure to the inside walls, floor or ceiling? 
The biggest challenge in soundproofing isn't applying the basics, but I've found it to be rather applying these fundamental principles when you encounter a problem that is not commonly seen out there on the internet. And that's when you have to create your own systems using these principles to be able to overcome these design problems. Now, some of you may be watching this video and saying, this is all really cool and interesting, but at the end of the day, I just want a soundproof room and I don't think I wanna get a full degree in acoustic engineering before I'll be able to get that soundproof room. This is where you are making a wise decision and potentially asking for some help. For those of you out here there that want to get some help with your soundproofing design, I highly recommend signing up for one of my free soundproof clarity calls. You can sign up right away by just going to soundproofyourstudio.com and clicking on the soundproof clarity call link. And this will allow you to book a 30 minute Zoom call with me where I will go over the roadblocks that you're having with your soundproofing project and give you some resources to help understand how you can move the project forward. Again, my name is Wilson Harwood. I am a soundproof designer and acoustician based in Nashville, Tennessee. And if you are on this journey, you can also check out that free resource at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop, where you can watch my 45 minute soundproofing workshop. I'll see you all next week with more information on soundproofing and room acoustics. Thanks for watching.